Okay, it's time to talk about God's Spirit, Elliot. Now, this is where things kind of get a little crazy, a little weird, and a lot of people misunderstand this, okay? I, like I said, I'm going to make this short, fast, and direct so you can understand and comprehend it. God's Spirit does require a little more explaining than the body and the soul. God's Spirit is extremely important. When you're in your mother's womb, God has formed you, your body, the soul, and he gives you life by putting in your soul God's spirit, his spirit, okay? When God made you, he breathed his spirit into your soul, giving you life. Elliot, the soul contains God's Spirit. The soul works like a vessel, containing, holding, carrying God's Spirit. You got the body, you got the soul, and now you have God's Spirit. It's the Spirit that gives you the life in you. This is very important. Your body will die and turn to dust. Your soul will never die. We'll talk about that more later on here. But right now, just know, when the body dies, the soul does not. You do not die. The soul lives forever. And it is God's spirit, now that we're talking about, that you have to understand. God's spirit is a part of man. The first time we ever saw God's spirit enter into a life is when he made Adam. What is it? I think it's Genesis 2, 7, 2, 8, 2, 7, where he breathed life into his nostrils. That gave him life. God's spirit entered into his soul. Now, what is God's spirit? Well, it's it gives you God-like qualities. It, it gives you the intellect, the emotions, the fears, the passion, the creativity. And this becomes a part of your soul, like we talked about earlier. It's the psychological being of who you are, what you are. It's the consciousness of yourself. And it has all the godlike qualities because you're made in the image of God. Remember that, Elliot. When God formed you in the womb, he did it the same way like everybody else. He gave you life, giving you his spirit into your, into you, the soul. The spirit provides us with unique abilities to comprehend and understand God. When we pray, the soul prays, is asking for wisdom, is reaching out to God. But there's a problem here, and this is where it gets a little confusing. When Adam, well, reading Genesis, Adam disobeyed God. And when that happened, God punished him. He actually punished mankind, all human beings, all souls, from then on, after Adam and Eve. The human spirit, well, another name for God's spirit is the human spirit. So let me get that out right now, because this is where the confusion comes. This is God's spirit, but we like to give it a distinction, because there is a fourth part we're going to talk about. And we have to make a distinction of this spirit, God's spirit in you. We actually call it the human spirit. It's God's spirit, but it's human spirit because Adam disobeyed God and the spirit was damaged from that day forward in the fall, in the disobedience, in the sin that Adam did. We call it the human spirit. It's God's spirit but we call it the human spirit now because it has fallen into sin. You're not going to understand that. 
So let me go backwards. The Spirit, God's Spirit, gives you the ability to have fellowship with God when it was given to you. But that fellowship was broken when Adam disobeyed God. So, in a way, God's Spirit is dead on arrival. Adam did not die physically that day, but he died spiritually. That's really important for you to understand. When God punished Adam and Eve, they died spiritually. God's Spirit was broken off. The fellowship between man and God was broken. This is the same Spirit, God's Spirit, but we call it human spirit, that your soul contains. You, the soul, contains. So ever since the beginning of man, the human spirit has borne the effects of Adam's fall. We're spiritually dead when we come out of your mother's womb. That is God's spirit, but we call it the human spirit. I'm not going to get into a lot of verses here. I'm not going to do that yet. Wait, let me go backwards. You have the body, you have the soul, that's you, your being, and you have God's Spirit in you. But it is already dead, and we call it the human spirit. So from now on, I'm just going to refer to it as the human spirit. It is covered in sin. It is covered in flesh. There is no way... The human spirit that you have in you, Elliot, has the power to get your soul to heaven. Let me repeat this sentence. Understand carefully. When your body dies, God's human spirit, the human spirit in you, does not have the power to save you. And you will not be able to go to heaven with this human spirit. Do you understand? 